With so many new tools and ways to use technology, Open Educational Resources, or OER, have become an important supply from which to draw when developing instructional content. OER are educational materials produced by one party that are licensed to be shared freely and at no cost by others. Let's examine the process of finding and using OER, and how to handle the complications that can arise when combining materials with different licenses. There are many open licenses, but Creative Commons licenses are the ones we will be working with here. So how do you go about finding and using OER? Let's watch Michelle as she develops a chapter for an open textbook on metabolism. Michelle has been teaching metabolism for years, so she has already developed the text of the chapter from her notes. But she needs some illustrations, specifically of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. She'd also like to find some exercises to accompany the text. There are many places to find OER, such as Flickr CC, OER Commons, Connections, Internet Archive, or Open Michigan. Michelle goes to Flickr CC at flickr.com slash Creative Commons. That brings her to a collection of all the Flickr images that have Creative Commons licenses. She quickly finds the images she's looking for. both with CC BY licenses. For exercises, she logs into the Orange Grove, Florida's digital repository where a wide range of OER are available. Here she searches for electron transport chain and turns up some exercise test questions also licensed CC BY. Because there are no restrictions on these images or exercises, Michelle is free to modify them to suit her needs. She resizes and crops the images and writes captions for them. Then for each image, she provides the specific Creative Commons license with a link back to its license deed. Next, she writes the creator's name, linking back to the Flickr site where she found the image. She also adds some references to the images in her text. She then adds the exercises at the end, removes two that do not belong in her chapter, provides attribution to the creator, and links back to the resource. Then she uses the Accessibility Checker utility in Microsoft Word, which spots content that may pose challenges for persons with disabilities. When Michelle saves her book, she notices the metadata text fields at the bottom of the Save As window. Her name is already listed as author. She could add more names if she had co-authors. She enters the title and subject, then several tags that describe the content of her work. When Michelle clicks Save, the metadata is embedded in the document. Finally, she adds a Creative Commons license. Because the other content she is using has CC BY licenses, the least restrictive license available, she is free to choose the license she wants. She goes to the Creative Commons page to choose a license. She answers a few questions and her license is selected automatically. She then fills in some information to help others provide proper attribution for her work and the chooser automatically generates text and code for her document. She copies the text and pastes it onto the first page of her chapter. A job well done, Michelle. Thanks.